Preface Buying your own home or property can be an exhilarating experience. However, it might go all wrong if you do not understand the mortgage process in detail. Several individuals and families feel overwhelmed due to the amount of paperwork involved that needs to be complete while undergoing the mortgage loan process. However, it is imperative to have an in-depth knowledge of the entire mortgage loan process to have a win-win situation. By knowing what you should expect, especially if you happen to be a first-time home buyer, this will help you in making the right and solid decisions about the home or property purchase through mortgage loan undertaking. The mortgage fundamentals will help you in navigating through the overall mortgage process. From the different people or parties involved to the overall costs, and even the basic terminologies, you can be assured of a complete understanding of the mortgage process and its importance in your home buying process. Understanding the primary function and purpose of the different types of mortgage loans and their applications could help you in taking the wisest decision always. Introduction A dream home of your own. Everyone wishes to have this dream come true in their life. Owning one's home can serve as a lifetime opportunity for you and your family as well. In addition to the emotional aspect of buying one's own home, it also ensures the financial security to your family. However, owing to the rising real estate prices, it has become increasingly difficult to make this dream come true easily. This is where the concept of mortgage loan comes in. With the help of mortgage loans, several individuals and families across the world are making their dream come true by buying homes they have always aspired for. However, before taking the plunge of taking any type of mortgage loan, it is important to understand the in and out of this financial system. Before you think of availing the mortgage loan facility, you must understand its basic concepts with respect to its definition, importance, different types and how you can avail the same. All of these are explained here for your aid. Lesson 1. Mortgage Loan Mortgage loan is also referred simply as a mortgage. This term is used in the context of the real property purchases by the purchasers for raising funds in order to buy some real estate. This is also used by the existing owners of the property for raising funds for any purpose at the time of putting the lien upon the property that is being mortgaged. The mortgage loan is considered to be secured on the property of the borrower through some process referred to as mortgage origination. This implies that some legal mechanism has to be carried out which would allow the lender in taking possession and then selling the secured property as repossession or foreclosure for paying off the mortgage loan. This is done on the condition that the borrower defaults upon the loan or failing to follow the terms of the same. The term mortgage has been derived from the term law French, as used by the English lawyers during the Middle Ages. This implied death pledge and is used to refer to some pledge ending in case either the property gets overtaken or the obligation gets fulfilled through foreclosure. The term mortgage can also be used to describe some borrower providing consideration like the collateral for the loan or benefit. The mortgage borrowers are used to refer to individuals who wish to mortgage their homes or any other asset. It could also imply some businesses who might mortgage their commercial properties, like the business premise, investment portfolio, residential property for tenants, and so more. The lender of the mortgage could be some financial institution like a credit union, bank, or any building society. This would greatly depend on the particular concerned country. The specific loan arrangements could be made available directly as well as indirectly with the help of intermediaries. Specific features of the mortgage loans, like the size of the given loan, interest rate, maturity of the given loan, method for paying off the loan, as well as other traits might vary significantly. The rights of the lender upon secured property would take priority upon the other creditors of the borrower. This implies that in case the borrower gets insolvent or bankrupt, then the other creditors would be repaid the debts only owed from the sale of the particular secured property in case the lender of the mortgage has been repaid fully in the first instance. In several jurisdictions, it has been considered normal for the purchases of the home that can be funded with the help of the mortgage loan. Only some individuals gather enough liquid funds or savings for enabling them to buy property straight away. 
In various countries wherein the demand for the ownership of home is quite high, strong markets for mortgage loans have also developed significantly. Lesson 2 Basics of Mortgage Loans Basic Concepts and Legal Regulations as per the property law of the Anglo-American society, the mortgage usually occurs when the owner makes a pledge of the interest as some collateral or security for the loan. As such, the mortgage can be seen as an encumbrance or limitation upon the right of property, just like some easement. This is also due to the reason of the maximum mortgages occurring as some condition for availing the new money for the loan. As a result, the term mortgage is quite a generic term for all the loans that are secured by any real property. Just like other variants of loans, the mortgages usually come with a certain interest rate. These are also scheduled for amortizing upon a given period of time, usually 30 years. The different kinds of real property are usually secured with some mortgage and thus come with interest rate that has to be reflected at the risk of the lender. Mortgage lending is considered to be a primary mechanism that has been used across several countries for financing the private ownership of some commercial or residential property. Though the basic terminology as well as precise forms might tend to differ across countries, the basic fundamentals remain the same. Property This is referred to as the physical form of residence that has been financed. The precise form of property ownership might vary from one country to the other. It might also restrict different variants of lending that could be available. Mortgage This is the security interest in the property of the particular lender. This might entail some restrictions upon the disposal or use of the concerned property. The restrictions might usually include the requirements for purchasing mortgage insurance as well as home insurance or for paying off the outstanding debt just before an individual is about to sell the property. Borrower this is the individual who is borrowing and either is creating or has the ownership of the interest in the given property. Lender This could be any lender. However, mostly the lender is some financial institution in the form of banks or other organizations. In certain countries like the United States, the lenders could be certain investors as well who might be owning an interest within the given mortgage through some security backed by the mortgage. In this kind of a situation, the first lender is referred as mortgage originator. He or she is then responsible for packaging and selling the loan to different investors. The total payments received from the borrower are then collected by some loan service provider. Principal This is the actual size of the given loan. This might or might not include various other costs. As the principal gets repaid, the principal might go down in total size. Interest. It is used to refer to the financial charge for using the money of the lender. Repossession or foreclosure. This refers to the situation wherein the lender might have to foreclose, seize or repossess the given property under various circumstances that could be vital to the particular mortgage loan. Without the presence of this aspect, the mortgage loan can be arguably considered to be no different from any other variant of the loan. Completion. This refers to the legal completion of the deed of the mortgage. Therefore, this implies the starting of the mortgage process. Redemption. This implies the final repayment of the total amount that has been outstanding. This could be a natural redemption which occurs at the end of the term that was scheduled or as a lump sum redemption which happens when the borrower makes the decision of selling the entire property. The mortgage account that has been closed is also considered to have been redeemed. Several other particular characteristics could be common to several markets. However, the ones that are mentioned above are the essential fundamental characteristics. The governments of different countries usually tend to regulate several aspects of lending of the mortgage. This is done either directly like via legal requirements or indirectly like regulation of financial markets or participants. This could also be done through the state intervention that could be in the form of direct lending by state-owned banking institutions, government or the sponsorship of other entities. 
The various other traits that could be used for defining a particular mortgage market could be historical, regional, or carried away by certain characteristics of the financial or legal system. Mortgage loans usually get structured on the basis of long-term loans. This implies the periodic payments which could be similar to some annuity and are calculated as per the timely value of money. The most fundamental arrangement might require the monthly payment which is fixed over a certain period like 10 to 30 years. It would greatly depend on the local conditions. Through this period, the loan's principal component, that is the original loan, might be gradually paid through amortization. In the practical application, several variants could be possible which might be common worldwide as well as across each country. The lenders usually provide the fund for mortgage loans against some property for earning an income through interest. The lenders usually borrow the funds themselves, for instance, through issuing bonds or through taking some deposits. The particular price upon which the specific lenders tend to borrow money thus affects the overall borrowing cost. The lender might also, in several countries, go for selling the mortgage loan to some other parties who might be interested upon receiving the cash stream from the given borrower. This is usually done in the form of some security through means of securitization. The process of mortgage lending might also consider the involved risks upon the mortgage loan. This implies the likelihood of the repayment of the given funds. This is considered as a function of creditworthiness of the particular borrower. In case the funds are not repaid, the lender has the capability of foreclosing upon the assets of the real estate, the time delays, risk of interest rate and the financial conditions that could be involved under specific circumstances. Mortgage Underwriting After the application for mortgage loan has entered into its final steps, the application for the loan then gets moved to some mortgage underwriter. It is the duty of the mortgage underwriter to verify the different kinds of financial information as provided by the applicant of the loan to his or her lender. The process of verification is done on the basis of the credit history of the application along with the total value of the property that is being purchased. The appraisal of some kind might have to be ordered. The employment as well as the financial information of the particular applicant is also verified. The process of underwriting for the given mortgage might take some days to be completed. It might even extend to some weeks in special cases. In some cases, the process of underwriting takes too long. This period is highly extended such that the given financial statements have to be submitted again to maintain their current status. It is therefore recommended to maintain the record for same employment. One should not open or use the new credit as the process of underwriting is going on. Any sort of changes that are made in the credit, employment or any kind of financial information of the applicant could result in the denial of the mortgage loan. Types of Mortgage Loans There are several types of mortgage loans that are used worldwide. However, there are also several factors that might help in defining the specific characteristics of the given mortgage in a broad manner. All such factors and loan types could be subject to certain legal requirements and local regulations. Interest The interest could be fixed or variable throughout the given life of the loan. The interests could also be higher and lower at the same time. Term the mortgage loans usually come with a maximum term. This implies the span of years after the duration of which the amortizing loan has to be repaid. There are specific mortgage loans that might come with no amortization at all. These require complete payment of the remaining balance at a specific date. This might even denote the negative amortization. Payment frequency and amount the amount of loan to be paid every period, along with the frequency of its payments, might change in some cases. There are also instances wherein the borrower might have the will to either increase or in some cases decrease the amount of loan being paid. Prepayment Some variants of mortgage loans might restrict or limit the prepayments of a small portion or the complete loan. Some types might even require the payment of certain penalty for prepayment to the lender. There are two significant types of amortized loans. ARM, Adjustable Rate Mortgage, and FRM, Fixed Rate Mortgage. 
ARM is also known as a variable rate or floating rate mortgage. In specific countries like the United States, it is considered that fixed rate mortgages, FRM, are the norm. However, the floating rate mortgages are also quite common. The combination of both, the fixed as well as the variable rate mortgages, is also highly common. In this case, a typical mortgage loan might have a fixed rate for a certain duration of time, for instance, first five years, and then it might vary for the next remaining period. FRM – Fixed Rate Mortgage In this kind of amortized mortgage, the interest rates are fixed for the entire lifetime of the mortgage loan. In case there is some scheme of annuity repayment, then the periodic payment is the exact same amount across the entire loan period. On the other hand, if there is a linear payback, then the periodic payment tends to decrease gradually. ARM – Adjustable Rate Mortgage In this kind of amortized loans, the rates of interest are usually fixed for a certain period of time. After this period ends, the rates of interest tend to change periodically, for instance, monthly or annually. The interest rates usually adjust upward or downward as per specific market index. The adjustable rates are used for transferring a part of the risk of the interest rate to the borrower from the lender. Therefore, these are widely used in situations where it is increasingly difficult to achieve the same or it might turn out to be extremely expensive. As the overall risk gets transferred to the specific borrower, the starting interest rate might be, for instance, somewhere like 0.5 to 2% lower in value than the average fixed rate of 30 years. Therefore, the size of the price market tends to be highly related to the conditions of the debt market. It also includes the yield curve. The charge that the borrower has to pay would depend on the specific credit risk as well as on the interest risk. The overall process of underwriting and mortgage origination deal with the checking of the credit scores, down payments, debt-to-income ratio and assets. Subprime lending and jumbo mortgages are not given support by the guarantees of the government and thus, these might have to face higher rates of interest. There are various other factors as well that might affect the overall rates. Down payments and loan to value While making a certain mortgage loan for purchasing a certain property, the lenders generally need the borrower to be making a down payment. This implies that the borrower is expected to contribute a major portion of the total cost of the particular property. This form of down payment might be expressed as some portion of the overall property. LTV, loan to value, is defined as the total size of the given loan against the estimated value of the concerned property. Thus, the mortgage loan under which the down payment has been done by the purchaser of around 20% might have an LTV ratio of around 80%. For the loans that are made against the properties owned by the borrower already, the LTV ratio would be calculated against the predicted value of the given property. The LTV ratio is regarded as a significant indicator of the involved riskiness with a certain mortgage loan. This implies that higher the value of LTV, higher is the risk that the given property, as in foreclosure, would be insufficient for covering the remaining amount of the loan principal. Value Actual, appraised and estimated As the value of the given property is a fundamental factor towards understanding the involved risk in the given mortgage loan, the determination of the value is another key factor in the concept of mortgage lending. The given value of the property could be calculated in several ways. Some of the most common ways of calculating the same include Transaction or actual value this value is usually determined as the actual purchase price of the given property. In case the property is not being bought at a specific borrowing time, then this information is usually not available. Surveyed or appraised value In several jurisdictions, some kind of appraisal of the given value by some licensed professional is found to be highly common. Mostly, there is a requirement of obtaining some official appraisal by the lender. Estimated value Various lender or the other kinds of parties might make use of their own estimates that tend to be internal. This usually happens in the jurisdictions where there is no existence of official appraisals. This might also happen in various other circumstances. Debt and payment ratios 
In several countries, there are one or more standard measures that can be used for determining the creditworthiness to be used. Some of the most common measures are payment to income. These are the mortgage payments that are expressed as some percentage of net or gross income. Debt to income. These include all the debt payments as some percentage of the given income and several other net measures that might be worthwhile. In several other countries, the credit scores are utilized in lieu or for supplementing these kinds of measures. There are also certain requirements for the documentation of the provided creditworthiness. These might include the pay stubs, income tax returns and so more. These specifications tend to vary on the basis of different locations. Some particular lenders might also be in the need of some potential borrower who might be having one or several months of available reserve assets. In some other sense, the borrower might have the need to present the availability of sufficient assets to be paid as the overall housing costs. This might include the taxes, mortgage value and so more. This has to be paid for a certain period in the conditions of some job loss or loss of other sources of income. Several countries include lower requirements towards specific borrowers. These might also offer low DOC or no DOC standards of lending that could be acceptable given under specific conditions. Conforming or standard mortgages Several countries include a notion of conforming or standard mortgages. These are used for defining a certain level of acceptable risk. The risk could be informal or even formal. Such kinds of mortgages might be reinforced by the given body of laws, market practice or some form of government intervention. For instance, the standard mortgage could be considered as having not more than the LTV of 70 to 80 percent and even not more than one to third of the total gross income towards the mortgage debt. A conforming or standard mortgage can be regarded as the fundamental concept. This is because it is often used to define whether the mortgage might be securitized or sold easily or not. If it tends to be non-standard, then it might affect the overall price in which it could be sold. In the US, a standard mortgage is referred to the one which is able to meet the given set of established procedures and rules of the entities related to the two significant government bodies as contained in the market of housing finance. These might also include some sort of legal requirements. On the other hand, the lenders who make the decision of making the non-standard or non-conforming mortgage loans are under a greater risk tolerance. They might do so under the knowledge that they might have to face several challenges while reselling the given loan. Several countries go with a similar concept and have similar agencies. These are used for defining the exact meaning of the standard or conforming mortgages. The regulated lenders, like the banking institutions, could be subject to certain restrictions or limitations. These might also be prone to higher risks for the non-standard or non-conforming mortgages. For instance, mortgage brokerages and banks in Canada usually encounter certain restrictions over the lending of some value greater than 80% of the given property. Beyond this value, usually a mortgage insurance might be required. Mortgage of foreign currency In certain countries that have currencies which keep on depreciating, the mortgages of the type foreign currency are also quite common. This type of mortgage enables the lenders to do the lending in some stable form of foreign currency. At the same time, the borrower might take the currency risk upon the condition that the value of currency might depreciate. Therefore, they might have the need of converting the higher value of the domestic currency for repaying the loan. Lesson 3. Repaying the Mortgage Along with the given two standard measures of setting the total cost of the particular mortgage loan, ARM or FRM, there are also certain variations in the method of the payment of the cost. There is also the variation in the way in which the loan itself gets repaid. The process of repayment usually depends on the prevailing culture, locality and tax laws of the given region. There are also several structures of the mortgage repayment for suiting the different kinds of borrowers. Principal and Interest The most popular and common method of repaying a certified and secured mortgage is by making regular payments as per the principal and the rates of interest over a given period of time. 
This method is usually known as amortization self in the United States. It also goes by the name as repayment mortgage in the United Kingdom. A typical mortgage is defined as some type of annuity as per the lender, as well as the calculation of the payments that tend to be periodic as based on the formulae related to the time value of money. Various other details might be particular to various other locations. As such, the interest could be calculated based on the 360-day annual term. For instance, the interest could be compounded yearly, semi-annually or even daily. The prepayment penalties might also be applied, including some other factors. There could be certain legal limitations on various matters. The laws related to the consumer protection might prohibit or specify various practices. On the basis of the seize of the given loan, as well as on the prevailing practices in the particular country, the term could be short, say 10 years, and it might be long, say 50 years and more. In the United States and the United Kingdom, usually 25 to 30 years is the maximum term. Although, shorter terms, like that of 15 years of the mortgage loans, is also quite common in these countries. The mortgage payments, that usually tend to be monthly, might contain a specific repayment amount of the given principal as well as the interest element. The amount that is supposed to go towards the given principal under each payment might vary throughout the mortgage duration. During the period of early years, the process of repayments is usually the interest. By the end of that period of mortgage, the payments tend to be mostly the principal. As such, the amount of payment that is calculated at outset gets determined for ensuring that the loan is being repaid at some particular future date. This provides the borrowers an assurance that by the process of maintaining the repayment, the loan is supposed to be cleared at a certain date in the future. This is under the condition that the rates of interest do not change during that period of time. Various lenders as well as third parties provide a bi-weekly type of mortgage payment process that has been designed for accelerating the paying off the loan amount. Interest only The basic alternative to the mortgage of the type principal and interest, there is the interest only type of mortgage. In this type of mortgage, the principal need to be repaid through the entire term. This kind of mortgage is quite common in the countries like the United Kingdom. This is usually associated with the investment plan that tends to be regular. With this kind of arrangement, regular investments or contributions are done to some individual investment plan that is designed for building up a lump sum in order to pay the total value of the mortgage at its maturity. This special arrangement is referred to as the investment-backed mortgage. This could be usually related to the typical plan that is referred to as the endowment mortgage. This is the case when an endowment policy gets utilised. Similarly, there are also the PEP mortgage, personal equity plan, pension mortgage plan or the ISA, individual savings account mortgage plan. As far as history is concerned, the investment-backed mortgages that are offered include several advantages of tax over the repayment of the mortgages. However, this practice is no longer in use in the United Kingdom. The investment-backed types of mortgages are usually observed to be at an increased risk. This is because these types of mortgages are usually dependent on the making of the investment to be sufficient in order to get rid of the debt. Until the recent times, it has not been uncommon for the interest-only types of mortgages as arranged without the presence of any repayment vehicle. In such a situation, the borrower usually gambles the fact that the given market of property might rise well enough for the loan to get repaid by the down trading at the time of retirement. Interest-only lifetime type of mortgage The recent guidelines have been generated to the lenders of the United Kingdom with respect to the interest-only types of mortgages. This has been tightened as per the criteria upon the new lending on the basis of interest-only parameter. The issue of several individuals has been with respect to the absence of any repayment vehicle to be implemented or the vehicle only. These performed in poor conditions and therefore served to be insufficient for the available funding, such as to repay the given balance by the end of the tenure. As the situation moves forward, the new regulations with respect to the MMR, Mortgage Market Review, have claimed that there should be the implementation of new criteria upon the vehicle of repayment that has to be used. 
depending on the likes of the entire nationwide, as well as several other lenders, the market of interest-only mortgages has pulled up. A recent resurgence in the market of the equity release is considered as the introduction of the interest-only mortgages of the lifetime type. Where the interest-only mortgages tend to include the fixed term, the interest-only lifetime type of mortgages would continue for the entire life of the mortgages. Such kind of schemes have proven the interest to individuals who might like to roll up the compounding effect of interest upon the conventional schemes of equity releases. These have also offered to be quite beneficial to the individuals who might have had interest-only type of mortgage with the absence of any repayment vehicle and would now have the need for settling the loan. These individuals can remortgage upon the interest-only lifetime mortgage in an effective manner for continuing the period. The interest-only lifetime type of mortgage schemes tends to be provided by usually two lenders in the current scenario, more to life and Stonehaven. These schemes work by providing the options of paying off the interest as per the basis of monthly payment. By the payment of the interest, ensures that the balance would remain the same for the rest of the lifetime period. This kind of market is bound to increase because the presence of more retirees would need proper finance during the time of retirement. Reverse Mortgages For the borrowers who tend to be old, especially after retirement, it could be possible for arranging a mortgage wherein both the principal and the interest are not repaid. The interest usually gets rolled up with increasing debt and principal each year. These typical arrangements are usually known as the reverse mortgages. These also go by the name as equity release mortgages, as a home equity or the lifetime mortgages. The naming of such mortgages usually depend on the particular country. These types of mortgages loans are usually not repaid unless the borrowers become deceased. Therefore, there is the factor of the age restriction. The government of the United States ensures the provision of the reverse mortgages through a special program known as the HECM, Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. In contrast to the standard mortgages, in which the total amount of loan mortgage is usually disbursed during the time of closing of the loan, the typical HECM program permits the homeowners towards receiving funds in several ways. These might include the methods of accepting it as a lump sum payment or as a monthly payment which tends to continue till the death of the borrower or until he or she moves out of the particular house on a permanent basis. It could also be received as a monthly payment across a defined period or even in the form of a credit line. Interest and Partial Principal In the United States, a balloon loan or the partial amortization is done in which the total amount to be paid as monthly payments or due are amortized or calculated over a specific period of time. However, in this case, the outstanding balance upon the given principle tends to be due upon some fixed point of time of the given term. In the United Kingdom, the partial payment or the repayment mortgage is highly common. This is especially common wherein the original mortgage has been backed by some form of investment. Variations The mortgage loan referred to as graduated payment comes with increasing costs over a period of time. These are usually granted to the young borrowers who might expect some kind of increase in their wages over the passage of time. The mortgages of the type balloon payment tend to include the partial amortization only. This implies that the total value of the monthly payments in due are amortized or calculated through a fixed period of time. However, the remaining principal balance tends to be due across some point of time. Towards the end of the given term, the balloon payments tend to be due. The instances wherein the rates of interest tend to be high in comparison to the existing rates on the loan of the sellers, the buyer has the option to consider the assumption of the mortgage of the seller. The wraparound mortgage refers to a certain form of financing of the seller's end that tends to make it simpler for a particular seller into selling the property. Similarly, the bi-weekly mortgage refers to the payments that are done on a duration of two weeks in contrast to the monthly payments. The budget loans consist of the insurance and taxes in the given mortgage payment. The package loans include the costs of some furnishings along with additional personal property to the specific mortgage. The buy-down mortgages permit the lenders or the sellers towards paying something which is similar to the points of reduction in the interest rate along with encouraging the buyers.
the homeowners can take the equity loans as well. In this type of loan, the homeowners receive a certain amount of cash for the particular mortgage debt upon their house. The mortgage of the type shared appreciation is defined as some form of an equity release. In the United States, the foreign nationals owing to the unique situation have to face the conditions of foreign national type of mortgage. The flexible mortgages give more freedom for skipping the payments or even prepayments by the borrower. The offset mortgages permit the deposits to be calculated against the specific mortgage loan. In the United Kingdom, there is the presence of an endowment mortgage wherein the borrowers have to pay an interest as the principal gets paid with some policy of life insurance. The commercial mortgages usually refer to different types of interest rates, contracts and risks in comparison to the personal loans. The participation mortgages permit several investors into sharing a particular loan. The builder could take the blanket loans which is used for covering multiple properties all at once. The bridge loans might be made use of on a temporary basis in the term of financial pending on some long-term loan. The loans of the type hard money help in providing the required financing by exchanging some real estate of the mortgaging collateral. Non-recourse or foreclosure lending In several jurisdictions, a particular lender might foreclose the given mortgaged property in case of certain conditions occurring like that of the non-payment of the loan amount. Being subjected to certain legal requirement, the particular property might then have to be sold out. The amount that has been received from the selling of the property is put to application of the original debt. In various jurisdictions, there are mortgages loans that tend to be of the type non-recourse. This happens when the funds that have been recouped from the selling of the particular mortgage property tend to be insufficient for covering the outstanding debt. In such cases, the lender might have the need to recourse to the particular borrower after the event of foreclosure. In several other jurisdictions, the borrower is considered to be responsible for the presence of any kind of remaining debt. Conclusion after a detailed study of the fundamentals of the mortgage loan, you can make the wisest decision about availing the same or not. Everything from the definition of the mortgage loan to its importance, different types, the basic terminologies, the different processes and so more has been explained here for your ease. You can go through the same to make your dream of owning a home a reality. This calls for the proper understanding of the mortgage loan basics. By knowing the same, you can deal with the mortgage loan parties and organizations in a wise manner. As such, you would also be prevented from anyone making a fool out of your due to ignorance about the mortgage loan process. This also prevents you from paying unjustified amounts or signing to unwise contracts while availing the mortgage loan process. Therefore, it is imperative to know everything about the mortgage loan process to success in your home buying process in the most feasible manner.